Hi there, this is John Goldie. Um, I'm going to do some basic uh, lessons, a kind of short series on just um, basic chords and some ideas that I use when I'm um, sort of teaching people and working with especially younger players and getting them used to working in groups of chords and also um, just some basic rhythm uh, techniques and stuff. But I'm going to start off with um, four basic chords. Um, I'm going to go also be in the key of G. So if I'm in the key of G, that really means that I've got um, three main chords, G, C and D. And the extra chord I've added there, the fourth chord is E minor, um, which is a kind of relative minor key, basically like a sister key to the major key. And the reason I've picked those four chords are just the fact they crop up in loads of tunes. Um, so if we have those four chords and we get comfortable with them, then we can develop that and we can learn some of our favourite tunes and utilise those chords to play them. So when you're learning chords, I mean, some people might have done this already and this will be easy for them. Um, but certainly when I was learning chords, I don't know what anybody else sort of feels about it, but I think when you're learning stuff initially, it's just as quick as you can learn it. It's just as quick as you can do it and then get on to play some tunes. Um, and that's natural, I think, to be like that. Um, what I've noticed is, though, what's quite important, I think, is to be able to play the chords really well before you move on, if you can do that. Um, I'm saying that I didn't really do that myself when I was learning, but um, I've learned just through experience that it's quite useful to, to be able to do that. And by that, what I mean is, um, I'm kind of assuming at this point that we can all play um, G, C, D and E minor, but even when you just play the chord of G, um, a simple way to check that you've got all the notes okay is just to go through each note individually, each string individually, and make sure they all ring out and they've got a good sound. You might find occasionally you'll get some strange noises, some dud notes, etc. But I wouldn't really worry too much about that. What I would do is just try and sort it out. So try and figure out what is causing the note to be uh, not right or not sounding properly. Um, normally it's not the finger you're pressing down, normally it's the adjacent finger, the one next to it, that's maybe touching a string and then stopping it from ringing out. The thing sometimes is quite difficult is we can't really see that, so we're looking at this chord. If I move like a millimetre, and then I move a millimetre back, you can see there's not a lot of movement in my hand, but I've just moved it slightly so that one of the fingers, this one here, touches the next string, deadens that note out, doesn't work. So if you notice when I did that, I sort of flattened my fingers down a little bit. And ideally what we want to be able to do is to point our fingers down all the time. So if you can point your fingers down, you've got less chance of hitting the next string. Now again, to some people this might seem quite basic. I personally, um, didn't really think about it too much when I was first learning the guitar, but when I came on to do some, some more professional work and be in studios and do different things, then that's when you really notice if your chords are not that good. Um, somebody will be quick enough to tell you, you know, that doesn't sound right, there's a little buzz there, or something, you know, whatever it is. Um, so I think um, if you do that with each chord, yeah, there's a sort of buzz when I had the first note there. And then go to the next chord, C. Make sure you do the same thing again, D. And E minor. And again with the chords, you can play E minor that way with your first and second fingers. Or you can play it with your second and third. I think it really depends on what you're comfortable with to start with. Um, I tend to play my G chord with these three fingers, my second, third and fourth. But of course, it's maybe easier to start with your first, second and third. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference at this stage when we're just sort of here to start off. Um, so a lot of people will stick to that shape. I think I changed 
to that version when I realised you could get to C a bit quicker. So rather than have to move all of your fingers round to get to C, I realised that if I played G that way, to get to C, I didn't have far to move. Now I think, again, that's one of those things that, okay, if you practice, you'll be able to move quick enough just using either fingering, it won't make any difference. And that's not a bad little exercise in itself, I think, to do, is just to make sure you, know, you can do a bit of that. Uh, you can go between exercises, um, go between shapes, sorry, uh, as an exercise, just go that to that, you know, and see if you can do it both ways around. Some people, I find, especially younger people when they're learning the guitar, some people automatically go to that because they find it easier, uh, but most people automatically go to that. Um, again, when we come to practice and going between chords, I think that's when it will come to light what would be the easiest um, version. I mean, there's not really sort of rights and wrongs particularly. I know some people play D a different way from that. I just play things the way I find them easiest myself and how I've developed over the years uh, in my guitar playing, what I've found to be the easiest way to do it. Okay, so if we now think about these four chords, G, C, D and E minor, um, the reason introduced them as I was saying at the beginning it's in the key of G it's the three main chords in the key of G which is G C and D and if you think about any rock and roll tune if it's in the key of G C and D are likely to be the other two chords um, in modern music um, if we take something like Someone You Love by Luz Capaldi it will have those four chords in it if we take something like uh, Shotgun by George Ezra it would have those four chords in it and thousands of other tunes as well so it's quite a good place to start and it also means that from the beginning we're looking at things in a family of chords rather than just random chords. I think if you learn random chords, which I did when I was learning guitar, sometimes you've just got a lot of different bits of information in your head dotted around up there, but not really necessarily linking together that well. And I think if you're able to look at them in, in groups, then it's a little bit easier. Um, just to work things out and um, obviously you can you know you can go on the internet and find out anything these days but it's still I think a, a good exercise to try and work things out just completely by your own ear 